just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Gotta made it YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Team, keep it clean. Y'all already know that I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let's get into these questions, man. First question on this episode came from my guy Mike H. He said, Hey, Engraven, first and foremost, I want to thank you for the videos. Been a tough year. I lost my uncle and my aunt. Oh, say, hey, sorry to hear that, man. Um, man. Sorry to hear about that, man. Oh, uh, man. I, uh, man. That's, oh, I know that, that, that's just, that's got to be tough, man. That's got to be tough. Uh, especially like an uncle and aunt because, those are usually people um, who you grow up with, and those would be like your mom's or your dad's brother and sister. Uh, so sorry to hear that, man, because losing anybody is tough, uh, especially when it's family, man. So we 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 rocking with you, and we got your back, though. Team Keep It Clean got your back, man. Um, but he says spending time with family means the world. Uh, the time you have put into these videos, I'm sure, must be exhausting. Uh, the spread of positivity really makes a huge difference. Keep up the keep up the good work. Appreciate it. Um, anyway, something that has been bothering me all summer. Uh, I feel as though some of our fans write off our players without giving them a chance. That's true. Uh, it's constant. Anytime a big name comes up, especially recently with Julio Jones, T. Y. Hilton, Melvin Ingram, Justin Houston, Michael Thomas, and now Chandler Jones. Uh, and I mean, sometimes it's not even writing the players that the Ravens have off. But at least from my point of view, it's just really wanting to be aggressive and try to build the bully that EDC said he wanted to build. Um, and with Ravens, like more so like on defense, they've done it. They've done it with Marcus Peters. They've done it with uh, Calais Campbell. They did it with Yannick Ngakwe. They'll get the, these these names, these bigger names on defense, but on offense. It's almost cricket sometimes. Um, so that's why uh, I was really hoping this year, especially with Lamar being in the last year of his contract, well, not even the last year with, with him, his contract not, even if he signs a new deal, uh, it, most of the money won't kick in until later. I was hoping that they would really, like, go all out. And, hey, Sammy Watkins is cool, and I hope he can stay healthy. And I know he's going to be a big contributor, but, again, I hope he can stay healthy. But I really wanted them to just go all out. Rashad Bateman was nice too. That was a nice addition. They, so they did some nice additions there. But I just I I wanted them to get a proven guy, somebody who's like that dude. But anyway, um, he said sure. EDC has been known for being cheap, <laughs> but he's always looking ahead for years into the future. Fans need to understand big contracts, including Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews, are coming up. Some of these veterans are asking for too much to be brought in. Ah. Uh, Mm, well, I, it, it all depends. Um, some of the veterans are getting paid too much by their teams, and the teams feel like, you know what? No, we don't want that. You're not worth it. Um, some of the veterans, they want to raise. Some of the veterans just want out because they're tired of being wherever they was at. Uh, but anyway, he said, I think we will be fine with the guys that we have. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's a possibility we bring in Justin Houston later in the season? Later in the season, no. He's, he's going to be signed before the season starts. Uh, he should be signed literally any day now. I'm recording this on uh, July 29th. Um, so he could be. It was a report that just came out today about Justin Houston. Uh, so that he's had several offers, but he obviously hasn't signed anything yet, but he does plan on playing. So later on in the season, no. He won't be available later on in the season. It's, it's, he'll be making his decision really soon. Uh, he may not want to take part in the whole training camp. He may want a little break. Because he's been doing training camps for a long time. You know, these veterans, they don't, they don't be feeling training camp. But anyway, um, I mean, if if it really were meant to be, wouldn't he have already been here or signed with a different team? I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Hope all is well with the family and be well. Appreciate that. Well, this was a very fun, loaded question. I appreciated this, man. Um, with Justin Houston, I guess he's just probably waiting for the right opportunity. The right opportunity, right team, 
right price, right all of that. And the thing about him is that he's at the point in his career where he's obviously not going to be the highest paid anything. Um, but he could still make a significant amount of money. But now him being a free agent, again, uh, he gets to choose. Ravens wanted him a couple years ago, but they lost out to him to the Colts. Um, with the Chiefs, he did his thing there. And he was very productive with the Colts and the Chiefs. He's a very productive player. Very productive player. Um, so now he has another say-so. Uh, and again, he had that a couple years ago. When players first get that, like when they become they're free agents and they get to choose where they want to go, it's like, oh, oh man, this is a beautiful feeling. And you have options. He has options. What exactly what he's waiting for though? I, I have no clue. I have no clue. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. So that's a really really good question. So we'll see. Maybe by the time you see this video, he might have signed with somebody by then, but probably not. Next question came from Daddy Gaming. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Been a huge fan, and I'm finally a patron." I appreciate that, man. Thank, thank you for becoming a patron. He said, I got a question for your series from questions from subscribers and hope that I get picked for one of the questions. Here it goes. I know you're a big Miles Boykin fan and so am I. Believe me. See? He ain't had to put the believe me part. I would have believed you already. But anyway, he said, but that boy James Prochet is something else, man. I know we haven't seen much of him in 2020, but his lack of opportunity frustrates me. And see that what you just said about James Prochet? Um... You could say that about a lot of guys when it comes to the Ravens and their wide receivers. Um, with the and and this is all it's all part of the process, man. I know again, T. Williams, Keith Martin, they got brought in for a reason, man. I mean, yeah, Keith Williams and T. Martin. I I, I mixed them up, my fault. But um, they they got brought in for a reason. Uh, so they can really get the most out of the passing game. Greg Roman, obviously, his strength is the running game, but also with his strength being the running game. J.K. Dobbins gets his. He eats. Gus Edwards gets gets his. He eats. Lamar's part of the running game too. He gets his. He eats. So where where, where Greg Roman's strength is, those guys eat. But his weakness, that's where they don't eat as much. But anyway, uh, so again, opportunity. Uh, he said, you should just see this boy's college highlights. This dude is insane when it comes to the 50-50 ball. And, my, and, and the, the thing that's crazy about that, James Prochet, he's like, I think he's like my height, like 5'10", something like that. He's a lot slimmer than me, <laughs> yeah, but uh, he's like like 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 so he, he down here, he, he low to the ground. We both low to the ground. We both low to the ground, but he, he can go up and get it. Uh, and it's crazy that he has that athleticism. The thing with James Prochet, he just doesn't, or well, he didn't have it last year. Maybe, didn't, maybe this offseason he added it, but he didn't have that burst, that quickness. His hands are there. Hands are reliable. You know that he's going to catch it. When he was on punt return, you know he ain't fumbling that ball. But he's not going to give you that explosive play. But, again, it's up to the coaching staff. You drafted him, right? For a reason, right? So you saw something in him, right? So it's up to the coaching staff to be like, hey, this is what he can do. This is what he's capable of. And we're going to put him in a position to win. Anyway. Um, he said this dude is insane with the, when it comes to the 50-50 ball In my opinion after watching his tape It seems his skill with the contested ball Is better than Miles Boykin I know it may seem like a stretch to go that far Based off of college highlights But all I'm saying is that the Ravens Should definitely give Prochet some more opportunities Instead of cutting him And it's funny because this question He sent this on July 28th Today is July 29th And today they said Prochet They said that boy was showing out Showing out in training camp. Now, again, by the time you see it, and it's, it's early in training camp. So tomorrow, Boykin could have a day where he shows out. Boykin could go off. But anyway, let's keep moving. <laughs> he said, uh, Boykin has had so much more opportunity his first year than Prochet. I know you've hinted at this before, but do you really see the Ravens cutting Prochet with his lack of opportunity? I feel like he can be dangerous if Greg Roman actually spends some time creating plays to set him up for success. Thank you for everything uh, and your dedication and keeping us updated. Appreciate it, uh, Gaming. I can't call you daddy. Like, I, I got to call you either Gaming or DG. I'm not going to just call it because it's, it's daddy Gaming. I'm not, I'm not going to call you daddy. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man. Um <laughs> I love y'all team keep it clean. I, I appreciate y'all so much, man. Um with the the last part, do do you really see the Ravens cutting Prochet with his lack of opportunity? I feel like he can be dangerous if Greg Roman actually spends some time creating plays to set him up for success. You could literally say this about any Ravens wide receiver. Anyone. 
Anyone. And even if you take out Sammy Watkins and you take out Hollywood, because we've seen them extensively, we've seen what they can do. But you throw in the other guys like DuVernay. We've seen glimpses of him, and we know what he's capable of. We know he's explosive, but lack of opportunity. Even Boykin, too. Boykin, he, the, the dude with the yak, he going to fight for it now. He going to fight for them yards. But, again, lack of opportunity. With Prochet, we didn't really get to see anything from him last year because I think he got, like, two passes thrown his way, caught one. The other one was the same exact play where he caught the first one, but it went for a pick six. So, I feel like you could say the same thing about any any of these guys. So, um, with Prochet, though, he ends up on the right squad. If he if he does end up being cut, but he, if he ends up on the right squad, it's, it's game over. If he gets his opportunity, it's game over. But, again, you could say that about so many people. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the roster because it's going to be a very – um. They got some tough decisions to make uh, when it comes to auto receivers because, again, it's very, very crowded. And uh, you never know what could happen with um, with uh, Deion Kane and Benjamin Victor, too. I feel like those guys are like um, not, yeah, kind of like dog horses because I don't, I don't think anybody really expects them to make the roster, either one of the two, because they were signed to future reserve deals. Um, but one of those guys could end up shining enough to where the Ravens are like, oh, man, I didn't see this coming. And then they can make the decision even harder. Uh, so hopefully that's, that is what happens to where the Ravens are forced with extremely tough decisions when it comes to the depth at wide receiver. Because, you know, the guys that are locks is Bateman, is Hollywood, is Watkins, is Wallace, is Duvernay. Those guys are locks, in my opinion. I think those five make the roster for sure. Uh, but then everybody after that with Deion Kane, Benjamin Victor, um, uh, not Jalen Moore. Oh, it's the other receiver. I think his number right now is, uh, I forgot what his number is. But um, was it Jalen Smith? Not Jalen Smith. Oh, I forgot his name. Anyway, um, so I, I think with, with Deion Kane and Benjamin Victor, Miles Boykin and James Prochet and the other receiver who I just cannot remember his name, I think the battle is with them. Um, and, and hopefully all of those guys really show up and, and they make it really hard on the Ravens and they make it really tough to where whoever doesn't make the roster, uh, they end up getting an opportunity somewhere else and they could end up showing their stuff there. Shout out to